Hi everyone, it's Marion. I'm back and I'm coming to you today from a bit different location. I am at my parents' house in the room that was my childhood room from about the age of 3 to 13. Um, so I've been in New Jersey visiting my family and yesterday was the big event of my niece's wedding. So we're all sort of coming down from that big high of yesterday and I wanted to get a little bit of a video in if I could. and. Um, Sort of apologies for the weird lighting in here and the laser-like look on my glasses. I've tried to avoid it by twisting my head away from the glare, but we'll see how that goes. Anyway, I just wanted to talk a little bit about the Reading Women Month Challenge because I haven't done it at all on my channel. And that doesn't mean that I haven't been participating. So just in case you have somehow missed it, the Reading Women Month Challenge is to celebrate the third anniversary of the Reading Women podcast which is hosted by the wonderful Kendra Winchester and Autumn Privet. And I'm sure you know Kendra's channel on YouTube, but if not, um, I will be linking it below and you should go check out her original announcement about the read along for the month. So what they've done this year is they've come up with this awesome bingo board. So to help sort of come up with some creative reads outside, you might, your original knee-jerk places you might go to. So. Um, I'm doing that and I'm going to be looking down a little bit at my iPad to remind me what the categories are. And so I will post up the uh, picture of the, um, the board here. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the fourth row down, so, or the second row from the right depending on how you interpret it. And so that is comprised of essays on the top square. And for that, I'm going to reread Joan Didion's collection After Henry, After Henry, which I've been meaning to read for many, many years. And the next square is LGBTQ. For that, I have read Freshwater by Aqua Aki Amazi. And the next square down is Kitty Lit. For that, I am reading or listening to the audiobook for Brown Girl Dreaming by Jacqueline Woodson. And the next square down is uh, Asian Author, and for that I am reading a collection of short stories by the Filipina author Mia Alvar, and the collection is called In the Country. And the last square in that row, I'm going to reread a favorite, or I actually have. I have reread a favorite, which is Joan Didion's memoir, A Year of Magical Thinking, that she wrote about the year after her husband died suddenly of a heart attack. And let's see, so what I'm going to also do is I think I can also manage to do the second row from the top because it intersects a bit with that other row. And so for short stories is the first square on the left. For short stories, again, I'm reading the Mia Alvar collection in the country. Memoir by a woman of color. I am also double dipping on this one because Jack, Jack Lynn Woodson's Brown Girl Dreaming is a memoir by a woman of color. For beach read, I have a couple in mind. At the moment, what I'm considering is Shonda Rhimes's memoir, The Year of Yes, The Year of Saying Yes, and the other one being Carrie Fisher's memoir, Wishful Drinking. And my idea of a beach read is, I guess, sort of a celebrity, a fluffy, somewhat fluffy or comical celebrity memoir. So this is something I don't read too often, but I would like to read for fun. And again, the LGBTQ square, I've read uh, Aqua Ake's amazing uh, novel, Freshwater. And for true crime, I'm hoping to read Maggie Nelson's The Red Parts, which I think Britta Polar talked about one time back in the day. And it's basically about uh, Maggie Nelson's aunt who was killed when Maggie Nelson, I don't think she was even born yet. Um, but uh, there have been another book that she wrote about her aunt called Jane, but it's more sort of like poetry. Um, and this, it's more like what happened is the, the killer was found uh, and brought to trial unexpectedly many years later. And so Maggie Nelson wrote another book about the whole experience of the trial and finding out what really happened to the aunt. So I'm hoping to read that. The only caveat is that I have it at home on my physical TBR in Berlin, and I'm not 100% sure that I will get back there before the end of the month. But if I don't, I will have to look for another substitute, which I'm sure I can find here at the library, or maybe there is something else on script. So that is my plan for Reading Women Month. 
Um, how are you doing on that? Are you making good progress with your bingo board? Have you read any of the books that I'm talking about here? Do you have any tr true crime recommendations in case I'm not able to get back in Berlin to read um, The Red Parts by Maggie Nelson? And how's your weekend going? What are you reading this weekend? Um, I hope it's a good one, and I hope you're all having a happy reading. Take care, guys. Till next time. Bye.